Hi, welcome back to my channel, The Leisure Life of Joe. Today I'm gonna talk to you about a hymn titled Great is Thy Faithfulness, and it is a hymn commonly played um, on most Baptist churches, and I commonly played it in my own church. So, my own source is this book, 101 Hymn Stories by Kenneth W. Osbeck. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the link below in my description box where I got this. I got it from Amazon. I don't know where else you can get it. I mean, Amazon is the easiest place where you can get this book. So just click the link below and you could get it wherever you are in the world. I mean, you can even ship it here in the Philippines. This book is great, but if it goes against the King James Bible, I still do believe and I still firmly believe that my final authority is the King James Bible. So I'm going to read an excerpt here and in the background, you will hear me playing my own improvisation of the hymn and i'm not a great pianist mind you and you might hear a little bit off key around somewhere here in this part and we cannot get our piano tuner here in our house because of the pandemic obviously so please bear with me and i hope you will still enjoy this video and it will be a blessing to you so before i start don't forget of course to subscribe in my channel like this video and hit the bell button the bell button looks like this and if you hit that, you will get notified every time I posted a new video in my channel. Great is thy faithfulness. The author is Thomas O. Chisholm from 1866 to 1960, and the composer is William M. Runyon from 1870 to 1957. Its scripture reference is Lamentations 3.22. Of the many gospel hymns written in recent times on the theme of God's goodness and faithfulness, this hymn stands out like a beacon light true. While many hymns are born out of a particular dramatic experience, this hymn was simply the result of the author's morning-by-morning morning realization of God's personal faithfulness. Thomas Obadiah Chisholm, the author, was born in a humble log cabin, log cabin in Franklin, Kentucky on July 29, 1866. Without the benefit of high school or advanced training, he began his career as a school teacher at the age of 16 in the same country schoolhouse where he had received his elementary training. When he was 21, he became the associate editor of his hometown weekly newspaper, The Franklin Favorite. Six years later, he accepted Christ as personal savior during a revival meeting conducted in Franklin by Dr. H. C. Morrison and at Dr. Morrison's invitation, Chishon moved to Louisville to become office editor and business manager of Morrison's publication, The Pentecostal Herald. Later, Chishon was ordained to the Methodist ministry but was forced to resign after a brief pastorate because of poor health. After 1909, he became a life insurance agent in Winona Lake and later in Vinland, New Jersey. Thomas Chisholm retired in 1953 and spent his remaining years at the Methodist Home for the Aged, Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Mr. Chisholm wrote more than 1,200 poems, wow, many of which have appeared frequently in such religious periodicals as the Sunday School Times, Moody Monthly, Alliance Weekly, and others. A number of these poems have become prominent hymn texts. In a letter dated 1941, Mr. Chisholm writes, My income has not been large at any time due to impaired health in the earlier years, which has followed me on until now. Although I must not fail to record here the unfailing faithfulness of covenant-keeping God and that He has given me many wonderful displays of His providing care, for which I am filled with astonishing gratefulness. In 1923, Mr. Chisholm sent several of his poems to the Reverend W. M. Runyon, the composer, 
a musician associated with the Moody Bible Institute, and an editor with the Hope Publishing Company until his death July 29, 1957. Mr. Runyon has written as follows. This particular poem held such an appeal that I prayed most earnestly that my tune might carry over its message in a worthy way, and the subsequent history of its use indicates that God answered prayer. It was written in Baldwin, Kansas in 1923 and was first published in my private song, Pamphlets. This hymn was the favorite of the late Dr. Will Houghton, former beloved president of the Moody Bible Institute, and it has since been an all-time favorite with students at the school, and as a result, its usefulness has spread to evangelical churches everywhere. Bab Shea states that this hymn was first introduced to audiences in Great Britain in 1954 by the Billy Graham Crusades and has since been a favorite there as well. Thomas G. Scholm, the author of the hymn, is also the author of the hymn Living for Jesus. Isn't that neat? So thank you for watching this episode of the stories behind each hymn. I'm trying to go along each hymn and thank you for watching this episode and hope to see you on my next vlog. Bye!